on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. The debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin, you have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending, was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. In the Church of Christ, we teach that the Bible teaches that we can intermarry and we, therefore we will intermingle. We'll also have a very diverse future. When I first heard about the Church of Christ and what they were teaching, they made me believe that they were actually teaching the truth. And if you're teaching the truth, there should not be an issue with black or white. So I decided to visit here and that's when I realized that they are teaching the truth and black or white, regardless of what your nationality is, is not an issue. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop... And as the church continues to grow, people are driving miles to hear the truth. Yes, I drove an hour to get here, but it's worth it, and we try to do it every week. I think we've definitely developed a reputation here. I think folks know who we are. Uh, they're familiar with what we teach. Um, <clears throat> I think there's still a lot of territory to be covered. I think things are going wonderful. Right. And I really think that Johnny is one of the best preachers I ever heard in my life and he's got two sons that are going to follow in his steps. So I wouldn't want to be anywhere but here. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. What power? What After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending, was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. In the Church of Christ, we teach that the Bible teaches that we can intermarry and we, therefore we will intermingle. We'll also have a very diverse future. When I first heard about the Church of Christ and what they were teaching, they made me believe that they were actually teaching the truth. And if you're teaching the truth, there should not be an issue with black or white. So I decided to visit here, and that's when I realized that they are teaching the truth and black or white, regardless of what your nationality is, is not an issue. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop, the views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James over here with you. Uh, here's our contact information. You've seen where we uh, assemble uh, our address uh, in the previews and we hope that you will come out and visit with us. The gentleman that called in uh, on Mark's program, hope to see, hope you'll come out and study the Bible with us. We'll be glad to see you. Hope you can make it out any chance you can. Word from the Lord at gmail.com is how you can reach me. 276-340-2653 is my phone number. And of course we meet at 250 the Boulevard and uh, if you're in the Martinsville area, one. Uh, 823, Martin, uh, 823 Starling Avenue in Martinsville, 120 American Legion in Danville for the brethren who, who meet there. And, of course, uh, what does the Bible say uh, comes on uh, before a word from the Lord. Uh, watch that. 
Uh, also, uh, on Wednesday nights at uh, 9 p.m. in Martinsville. And for those of you watching on uh, the Internet, we appreciate you watching. And we know there's a lot of people out, outside of our regular viewing area who watch on a regular basis. And we really appreciate that as well. <clears throat> and so we hope that you will uh, uh, continue to watching, uh, watching the Word from the Lord. And we uh, uh, hope you will take advantage of all the Bible studies that we have and make available to you. Uh, those things anytime you can. I'm going to ask uh, 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 that the phone numbers be put up uh, just uh, pretty quick. We're going to do something a little different tonight. Uh, we're going to uh, kind of a little different format. It's going to be, it may be just a little uh, because this is a very serious matter and so we don't want you to think we're taking the study of God's word flippantly. But sometimes, sometimes I think maybe you can prove a point by uh, maybe lightening things up just a little bit and present people let their defenses down and they can see, okay, this is called uh, game show night. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to present this lesson in the form of a game show. And like I said, I'm not trying to make it a game out of it, but I do want to say that if you call in and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to open the phone lines, we're going to have a question, and we're going to ask that individuals... Number one, stay on topic, and that is you're asked simply to answer the question. And uh, then later on, if you want to have some discussion on that point, we can have a little bit on, on that point. But primarily, we want you, if you call in, we want you to answer the question that we're posing to you, <clears throat> and then we'll go from there. And if you get the answer right, if you, if you answer the question correctly, what we have for you is we have a genuine book, copy of Muscle and a Shovel. This is a book that we give away free anyway. So, you know, like I said, it's one you can have if you simply ask us. But we have a copy of this. So if you answer the question, you get a copy of this book. Or maybe you'd like some DVDs. Maybe you'd like a Bible study, anything like that. Anything we have really is, is free. And so uh, you might you might already have a copy of this book. But if you don't have a copy of this book, we'll be glad to get this out to you uh, anyway. But if you answer the question, uh, we'll get you a copy of this book, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, this is what's at stake. If you don't want this, then you can choose from... You can choose another uh, another uh, prize. You can have this copy of a muscle and a shovel. So anyway, no. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to play a game, and what we're going to tell this lesson is Muslim or Mormon. Muslim or Mormon. Now we've been doing quite a few uh, uh, lessons on Islam, Islam-related uh, topics, and so see we already got a we already got a contestant lining up. So that's that's good. <clears throat> so I'm going to take this number, take this call. You're on the word from the Lord. You're on the word from the Lord. Are you there? Hello, caller. All right, maybe they don't want to, they don't want to uh, take the test. All right, Muslim or Mormon. And what we're going to do, friends, is ask you the question: Muslim or Mormon? And then, if you think you know the answer, you call in, and uh, we'll we'll see how we do. Okay. The first one's going to be pretty easy. Here's what we're talking about. This religious group, the leader or found a prophet. A prophet. Now I've got air quotes around. I've got quotes around. I'm not air quotes, but I've got quotes around this. A prophet. Anybody want to take a guess on that? Now, see, it's a pretty, it's starting off pretty easy. <clears throat> I could probably, I could probably ask uh, Mark to answer this one, and he could probably get it pretty easy without, without much, uh, much ado. All right, we've got a call, so hold that comment there, Mark. You're on the word from the Lord. Muslim or Mormon? Leader? Man, I'm going to guess it's Muhammad. Muhammad. All right, so you're going Muslim, right? Your answer is Muslim, uh, right? Yeah. All right. Is that your uh, final answer? Uh, well, it might be a trick, and it might be that Mormon. I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. All right, here we go. Look, here's the answer. Ready? The answer is yep. both. That's, you're exactly right, both. So, all right. Now, do you, you want to copy this book? Sure would. Okay, all right, tell you what, uh, let, we're, I'm going to go through the answer. We're going to give some information about this topic, and so you stay on the line, and uh, I'm going to get someone to take your name and address. Get, we need some content information, all right? Probably name, address, and the phone number, and uh, we'll get this book out to you, okay? Uh, thank you, friend. All right, all right, all right, stay on the line. That's, it's, uh, that's the toll-free line, number three, looks like. 
Okay, see how easy it is, friends? You don't call up. Everybody's a winner. Everybody's a winner. All right, so the caller said Muslim and Mormon. All right, and they first said Muhammad, and then he said, well, it may be a trick question. But you know what, friends? Both, actually both of these religions, Islam and the Latter-day Saints, the Muslims and the Mormons, both have a leader that is a that is so-called pro uh, prophet. Now, the Muslims, they all profess Muhammad to be a prophet. I mean, if you talk to one of them, you know, they'll always say the prophet Muhammad, and they'll say, uh, well, peace be upon him, or maybe if you see it in writing, you'll see something like uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, S-A-W after his name, which is some sort of, uh, of uh, reverential respect, I guess you might say, P-B-U-H, peace be upon him, so forth. So, But notice this. This is what, what we find about Muhammad. Muhammad, and then his full name is, I'm not even going to uh, uh, attempt to pronounce that, Abdul al quasim whatever. I mean, it's real long. Uh, is the founder of the religion of Islam, accepted by Muslims throughout the world as the last of the prophets of God. Now, that, that is, that is tr that's true. That's what they do. They accept him as their prophet, the, the, the giver of God's uh, message. Now, on the other hand, the Latter-day Saints or the Mormons, they claim Joseph Smith is a prophet. See that? They claim Joseph Smith. So uh, here, is what, here is what we find uh, the Latter-day Saints saying about Joseph Smith. This is right from the Book of Mormon. If you have a Book of Mormon, and probably everybody has a Book of Mormon, if you don't have a Book of Mormon, uh, which I'm not really suggesting you get one, but they're really easy to obtain. You can find them, a lot of times you can find them in the, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, the Goodwill. Uh, people give them away. That's, they're about good for a doorstop, really, but our book weight. <clears throat> but this is the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price, all in one, one volume. But in the, in the introduction to the Book of Mormon, this is what they say about Joseph Smith. Those who gain this divine witness from the Holy Spirit will also come to know that the same power that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, that Joseph Smith is his revelator and prophet in these last days, and that the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the Lord's kingdom once again established on the earth, preparatory to the second coming of the Messiah. So that's right there in the in the Book of Mormon, the introduction to the Book of Mormon. So Muslims and Mormons both both claim to have a a, a prophet, a prophet, a spokesman for God to be uh, 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 to be their leader. Now let me just give you some Bible on this before we uh, get off on that. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but let's look at, at what the Bible says about Deuteronomy uh, 18 and uh, Let's just talk about a, a prophet. This is what God says, Deuteronomy 18, 18. He says, I will raise them up, a prophet. Now, he's talking about Israel, and he's talking about in the latter days, which when, when Christ is going to come. He says, I will raise them up, a prophet, from among their brethren like unto thee. Now, he's talking to Moses. And he says, I'm going to raise them up, a prophet, like Moses, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Well, this prophet is Christ. This prophet is Christ. Now notice what happens if you didn't listen to this prophet. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall uh, will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, maybe a lot, just ballparking, maybe. Maybe that's what God had in mind, I don't know. Even that prophet shall die. You know what? Muhammad is a false prophet. Joseph Smith is a false prophet. They don't speak for God. They presume to speak for God. They are not speaking <clears throat> as, as, the, as the prophet that God said would come. This is Christ. Let's notice this. In John chapter 1, and I'm going to uh, listen to, uh, I want you to listen to what Jews asked John the baptizer. Uh, this is the John 1, verse 19. This is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? He confessed and denied not, I am, I am not the Christ. And they asked him then, Art thou Elias? <clears throat> he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? See, they were looking for the prophet that was to come. Well, you know what? That prophet was Christ. That prophet was Christ. That was the, the, the Messiah who wants to come. And that's who you listen to. That's why uh, when uh, uh, Peter, James, and John were on the, on the Mount of Transfiguration and they, 
uh, <clears throat> they, the Bible says they were asleep, and they saw Moses and Elias talking with Jesus. And Peter said, Lord, it's good that we were here. Uh, if, it, if thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for Elias, one for thee. And while he spake, behold, a bright light overshadowed the, a cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of heaven which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I will please. Hear ye him. You know what? The last prophet, the last prophet, if you will, the last great prophet that you should listen to is Christ. Now, Christ gave his word to his apostles, and that's who you listen to, but ultimately Christ is the lawgiver. Hebrews 1 and verse 3, God who at sundry, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners they spoken unto us by his son, not Muhammad, not Joseph Smith. All right? So, got a little, got a little Bible information about that uh, there before you. So, time for the next question. All right, anybody want to call in? We've got another question come in. So, here, Muslim or Mormon? Here we go again. Next question. Remember, you just have two choices. It's pretty easy. you got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Uh, first one maybe was a little tricky. I think it's a little pretty easy, really. All right, Muslim or Mormon? Muslim or Mormon? Here's the question. No one, want, no one wants to call in until they see the question, I guess. All right, here we go. Muslim or Mormon, this message Muslims was delivered by an angel. Got 50 50 chance there. Which of these religions had their message delivered by an angel, supposedly given to them by an angel? Anybody want, want to try on that one? All right, we're going to give you just a few seconds to call in, then we're going to just move on and. You just, you know, you just lose out on the prize. <clears throat> All right. Muslim, oh, here's the phones are ringing. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. You're on the word from the Lord. Neither. Muslim or Mormon? Neither. Neither? Yeah. Is that your final answer? Yes. You sure you don't want to take another guess? Well, I couldn't be wrong the other way. No, I won't guess again. <laughs> well, 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 take another guess because you're wrong. <laughs> it's, it's, one, it's at least one of them. Everybody's a winner. Take a guess. You still there? You going to take a guess? Okay, I'm going to another call. All right, he said neither. All right, Muslim or Mormon? Now, the first, the previous caller, caller, the previous caller said neither. And I'm very, very, I'm a very, very lenient and gracious uh, host tonight. So that's wrong. All right, Muslim or Mormon? The message was delivered to them by an angel. Mormon. I'm sorry. Mormon. Did you say Mormon? Mormon? All right, you are you are exactly right. Kind of. Would you like a Would you like a book? Yes. Okay. Yes. Where are you calling from? Are you, Eden, North Carolina. Eden, North Carolina. Okay. Stay on the line. We'll get your name, address, and phone number. We need a name, address, phone number. Okay. We'll get you this book. Okay. All right, stay on the line. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. Okay, that's line two. Now, now the caller said Mormon, and he's exactly right. He's exactly right. Uh, let's look at this. Um, here we go. <clears throat> Joseph Smith was visited by that very popular, actually not very popular, known angel called Moroni. Now, Moroni is really not an angel. According to the uh, Book of Mormon, uh, he, was a, he was a great warrior, supposedly, and he died and he was resurrected and he became back an angel. But this is what the Bible says, or the Bible, this is what the Book of Mormon says about Joseph Smith getting his revelation. Mormon uh, completed his writings and he delivered the account to his son Moroni, who added a few words of his own and hid up in the and hid the plates, hid up the plates in the hill Kumora. All right. So supposedly this revelation that Joseph Smith had was written on golden plates that were hid on this hill Kumora, and uh, Moroni came and showed him where it was, or gave him the, res the re revealed it to him on September twenty first, eighteen twenty three. The same Moroni, then a glorified resurrected being. Later he's called an angel. 
appeared the prophet Joseph Smith and instructed him relative to the ancient record and its destined translation into the English language. All right, so here everybody pretty much knows that, that the Mormons' uh, uh, doctrine was supposedly given to them by an angel, Moroni. But you know what? Now, the caller said Mormons, and he's right. He's right. But you know what? He's not totally right because it's also the Muslims. That's right. Islam. I'm sorry? Got a caller? Okay. All right. Islam was also had their revelation revealed by an angel. Okay. You're on the word from the Lord. Well, you, you called it before I uh, was able to say anything, James. I was going to say it was both of them. But okay. All right. Enjoy it's, your program. Is this key? Do you have a book? Yes. You have a book? Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Do you have you have one though? I appreciate it. Okay. No. I, you, I, I'll get you a book. You can have a book anyway. All right. I'll see you this Sunday. Okay. All right. All right. I'll get you a book. All right. Okay. See that? See how easy that was? It's a winner either way you go, unless you say neither. <clears throat> All right. So Muhammad's revelation supposedly came from Gabriel. Now everybody knows who Gabriel is. Now you see. I don't know, uh, the Latter-day Saints, they, they picked some of these off-the-wall Moroni angels. No one's ever heard of them. Everybody heard of Gabriel. So, you know, if, if you're going to try to put off a false doctrine being delivered by an angel, I mean, at least pick one that somebody knows, right? Now, this is what, this is what the, the Quran says. In Surah, that's really a chapter. That's a, Surah is another name for chapter. Chapter 2, verse 97. Say whosoever is an enemy to Gabriel. For he brings down the revelation to thy heart by Allah's will, a confirmation of what went before and guidance and glad tidings for those who believe. <clears throat> so Gabriel was bringing down the revelation. Gabriel was bringing down the revelation to uh, uh, Muhammad. Now, apparently, if you keep looking and reading through the, the Quran, apparently Gabriel is also the Holy Spirit. Now stop and so let that soak in for a minute. Gabriel is the Holy Spirit. Remember, Gabriel was the one who brought down the revelation, right? We just read that. Gabriel brings down the revelation to the heart by Allah's will. <clears throat> well, here we have, uh, this is uh, 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 chapter 16, verses 102. Say, the Holy Spirit has revealed it from your Lord with the truth that may establish those who believe as a guidance of, of, and good news for those who submit. Now, the first verse, we had Gabriel bringing down the revelation. Now we've got the Holy Spirit revealing it. And so apparently, Gabriel is the Holy Spirit. Now, let that soak in, all right? Gabriel's the Holy Spirit? I don't think so. I don't think so. That's not what the Bible says. Now, the Quran also says in um, chapter uh, 16, 102, this is another, this is another translation of, of that particular verse. It says, Say, O Muhammad, uh, Gabriel has brought it down, that the Quran down to your Lord with truth, and that it may make firm and strengthen the faith of those who believe as a guidance and glad tidings to those who have submitted to Allah as Muslims. All right? So there again you have another verse, another translation actually says that Gabriel... <coughs> Is the one who brought it down. So Gabriel, the Holy Spirit. Well, who'd have thought that? So we got the Muslims and we've got the Mormons both getting their message from a, an angel. But you know what? They both contradict the Bible. They both claim to have a message from, uh, from God delivered by an angel, and thus they both contradict the Bible. Because, number one, the Holy Spirit is not an angel. The Holy Spirit is deity. All right, he is God. He is a divine, he's a divine being. He possesses the divine nature of God. He's not an angel. And the Holy Spirit guided the apostles, not Muhammad, not Joe Smith, in revealing the truth. He guided the apostles. Let's look what the Bible says. All right, John 14. Here we go, John chapter 14. And verse 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. 
Now, friends, if Gabriel uh, was in fact the Holy Spirit, as Muhammad said, he would have guided him into all truth. Well, the Quran is not true. The Quran is, is so mixed up and so jumbled up. If you ever do a study of the Quran, you'll find it's, it's not uh, even close to the book that the, the Bible is. All right? It is so mixed up, saying that people were made from, man was made from a clot of blood and so forth. I mean, silly stuff. So it's not, it's not authored by uh, the, same, uh, the same Holy Spirit. It's not guided by the same Holy Spirit or not guided by the same Spirit as, as the Bible was. The Bible's guided by the Holy Spirit of God and the Quran was guided by some evil spirit from the devil. All right? So the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, would guide the apostles into all truth. Now, friends, li listen. If the Quran was all true, then it would agree with the Bible, but it doesn't. Contradiction. Same thing can be said about the Book of Mormon. All right? They're not inspired writings. John 16, John 16, verse 13. <clears throat> How be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you to all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. That's his Christ speaking. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive it, receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Now you know my friends, when I when I look through the Quran and I read through the, the Book of Mormon, I really don't see Jesus glorified. Now, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit would glorify Christ. But the Quran doesn't talk about Jesus as being the Son of God. As a matter of fact, it says contrary to that. It says don't say that God has a son. God doesn't have a son. All right? And uh, so they don't glorify they don't glorify Christ. The Latter-day Saints, it, the Book of Mormon doesn't glorify Christ. <clears throat> it actually says it's a, another testament of the gospel of Christ and uh, actually uh, uh, goes about you know, trying to give more information that supposedly we don't have. It, it doesn't glorify Christ. It glorifies Joseph Smith. So, so both of these, both of these uh, uh, religions, Muslims and Mormons, both uh, uh, fall into the category of, of uh, having a founder that's a prophet, so-called prophet, and both fall into the category of uh, a false doctrine that comes from the hand of angels. As a matter of fact, in Galatians chapter 1, <clears throat> in verse 6, notice what Paul says, marvel, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Now remember, if they are receiving their messages from the same divine spirit, they'd be in agreement. And Paul says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you. Now the Mormons actually say it is another gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, Paul said if someone comes and brings another gospel, that's not another then what you need to do, you need to watch out because they're perverting the gospel, they're troubling you. Though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have received, let him be accursed. And so here comes Muhammad, and here comes Joe, and they're both saying, we got our message from an angel. And Joe actually says, oh, it's another gospel. Well, Joe, you just struck out on two, two accounts, you know. Number one, you say you got it from an angel, which is contrary to what Paul said. You said it's another gospel of Christ, which is contrary to what Paul said. And then you used an angel that no one ever heard of, you know. You ought to get a strike against that just for, you know, making up some uh, uh, weird angel name, see. And so, no, false doctrine, false doctrine. All right, so Muslims, Mormons, let me tell you, friends, uh, they're both looking pretty similar here. All right, here's the next question. All right, callers, <clears throat> if you want to answer this question, here we go. Here we go. Um, Muslim or Mormon, here's your choices. Muslim or Mormon, here's the question. The Bible is the Word of God if it agrees with us. The Bible is the word of God if it agrees 
with us. You know, I, I, it's pretty interesting that people would, would, would say that. But actually, you know, this is something that, um, that, is, that is being said. So Muslim or Mormon, all right, you got, you got five seconds here. Call in. Got the numbers on the screen. If you want to take a guess, win a book. It's not win a book. We'll give you a book. All right, Muslim or Mormon, the Bible is the word of God if it agrees with us. Okay, time's up. Here we go. We're moving along. Well, we're going to start off. It's the Mormons. I think anybody who has gone to the door, entered the door, knock on the door, and see these two young men that claim to be elders uh, knocking at the door, they're going to tell them about the, the Church of Jesus Christ, the Latter-day Saints, and this is what they'll say. They'll tell you they believe in the Bible. But they say it this way, and this is right from the Articles of Faith. We believe the Bible to be the Word of God as far as it is translated correctly. We also believe the Book of Mormon to be the Word of God. So now notice this. As far as it is translated correctly. <clears throat> Friends, you, you know why they would say that? It must be because they're trying to find a loophole, find a door to get their own doctrine in. So we have, we have the Mormons coming along and say, well, we believe the Bible. As long as it's translated correctly. Well, see, that opens the door, friends. Because anything you don't agree with, they say, well, that's just not right. That's just not right. So if you're at home playing and you say, you know what, I was going to guess the Mormons, you could have had a book, Muscle and Shovel. All right, but you might have been sitting on the couch and you saying, you know what? I was I was sure that that was going to be the Muslims. Well, you know what? You'd been right too. You'd been right too. The Muslims will say basically the same thing. Now this is this is Malvester Dixon, Malvester Muhammad, uh, whatever he calls himself. He's got Malvester Muhammad on the screen there. So Malvester, this is what Malvester says. Now he's a member of the Nation of Islam. Now someone might say, well. Is the nation of Islam like Islam? I'll let them hash that out. They both claim to follow the Quran. They both claim to be Islam, Muslim, so we'll put them all, lump them all in there together. But listen to what he said. Now, you've got to listen carefully. This, listen to this video clip. This is he and Johnny Robertson. And listen to the, the terminology when asked about do you believe the Bible. Now, the, the Mormons say the same. They say, we believe in the truth of the Bible, but guess what? The Bible is not actually translated right. So you all don't have the real Bible. So go ahead and tell us. Do well, we have the real Bible? Got, you got the version. Do we have the real Bible? King James Version. Uh, well, I'm saying go ahead and tell us clearly. Go ahead and tell us clearly. I mean, the community can stand it. We don't really have the Bible. You, can, you can put words in my mouth. Okay, well, you go ahead and tell them. Tell them on, tell them on the air so we all know when we leave here. Does Malvester Dixon believe the King James is the, the Bible? I said King James uh, hands is dirty, and King James had, uh, I think, 40 people helping him uh, uh, translate it. And I'm going to ask you a question. No, you answer? didn't answer. You did not answer. I'm not answering your question if you're not going to answer mine. Do you believe the King James is the Bible? King James is the Bible. I'm saying the King James Version is the Word of God today. Go ahead and tell the community you don't believe that. I, I believe in the truth of it. And the no, that's, that's, beating around the the book. that's beating around the bush, y'all. Well, does that mean, mean, if he says the truth of it, does no. that mean there's some division in it? Look here. Yeah. Here's his prophet right here. Let, let me read his prophet. He read from that. Here's his prophet. They have the Bible so twisted by adding and taking out the truth that it takes only God that, mm -hmm. that it takes only God or one whom God has given the knowledge of the book to understand it. That's right. So he's saying that his prophet had to come along and tell us what the Bible really says because it's so twisted. So why don't you just go ahead and believe You don't so believe in the Bible. The Bible says, how can they know unless they have a teacher, and how can they have a teacher unless I say Are you so, quoting from the King James so, now? So, so, uh, are you quoting yes, from the King yes, James? But you don't believe James. King James is the Bible, so what are you doing I'm not believing the truth of it. We just caught you. You well, know that it's not really. I believe in the, the truth of it. All right, so it believes in the truth of it. Well, what does that mean? That means I believe parts of it, you know. I believe the parts that don't hurt me. You heard him just quote it. Now, friends, why would, why, would why would the Muslims say this? Again, same reason the Mormons do. 
The Muslims say it for the same reason the Mormons do, because they're trying to find a way, find a little niche to, <clears throat> to say they believe the Bible, but yet also get their doctrine in. Friends, it's really, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of like a bait and switch tactic, you might say. You know, a, a lost leader, sometimes stores, you know, they run an ad. You know, they'll run an ad saying, oh, yeah, we got this on sale. And then what they do, when you get in to buy that, buy that product, then what they do is they really switch it on. You say, well, we don't really have that product. We have a higher price over here. We have a different product that we'll sell you in place of this one. Well, that's what the Muslims and the Mormons are doing. It's pulling old bait and switch, you know. Well, we really believe the Bible. No, we don't really believe the Bible. We just really believe the truth of the Bible. We believe the Bible in as much as it's translated correctly. So when you quote the Mormons or the Muslims, Galatians 1, 6 through 9, that says, you know, the, the verse we just read about uh, if, if we or an angel from heaven bring you another gospel than that which we have uh, 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 brought unto you, then they're going to say, well, that's, that's twisted. That's not translated correctly. See how that it works? Now, friends, sadly, it's, it's really kind of like what uh, some of our denominational friends do, isn't it? You know, they'll get on the, they'll get on the Muslims and Mormons and say, oh, yeah, y'all taking out the Bible. Y'all don't really believe the Bible. Friends, I don't think you really believe the Bible either when it gets right down to it because the Bible says, like, he that believes in the baptized shall be saved. And a lot of our Baptist friends want to take that out of the Bible. Well, that's not really what that means. That's not really translated correctly. you basically saying the same thing that the Muslims and the Mormons are saying. See that? Now, why would they say that? Well, let's look at this. The, the Mormons say about the Bible. Now, listen to this. Listen to what they say. Now, uh, this is from uh, uh, one, of their, one of their apostles. If it be admitted that the apostles and evangelists did write the books of the New Testament, that does not prove of itself that they were divinely inspired at the time they wrote. Now, now stop and think about that. Let's, let's slow down. Let's think about this. You hear what they're saying? If it be admitted that the apostles and evangelists did write the books of the New Testament, that does not prove of itself that they were divinely inspired at the time they wrote. Well, couldn't we just say, say the same thing about good old Joe Smith? You can, you can, you can uh, admit that he was inspired prophet of God, but that doesn't mean that he was divinely inspired at the time he wrote it. So, that, so they're, they're dismissing the New Testament because it's like anything else, friends. If you want to get something by, you want to get something around the inspired Word of God, you have to start diminishing the Word of God. Well, it's not really inspired. They really weren't inspired. Now, they go on to say, Add all this imperfection to the uncertainty of the translation and who in his right mind. Now, this is, now this is a, a Apostle Orson Pratt's Emphasis. Who in his right mind could for one moment suppose the Bible in its present form to be a perfect guide? Who knows that even one verse of the Bible has escaped pollution so as to convey the same sense now that it did in the original? So basically saying, who is the one who's going to say, well, this is exactly what it meant back then? No one can say it. Well, friends, why don't you just throw the Bible out then? If that's really how you feel about it, Apostle Pratt, why don't you just throw the Bible out if, if no one can say for certainty that, every, that a single verse in there is, is accurate, just throw the Bible out then. But you know what? You, you know what? If you ask your Mormon, your, your Mormon uh, uh, buddies that come knocking on the door, can I get to heaven without the Book of Mormon? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't need the Book of Mormon to get to heaven. You can use that Bible that's not translated correctly. You can use that Bible that, you know, that no one in their right mind would, would, would suppose is, is the same as it was in the first century when it was written. You can get to heaven with that. Well, you know what? I'll take my chances. I'll take my chances with the Bible that may be supposedly corrupted, according to you, and not even the same uh, as it was when it was first written over the Book of Mormon that was supposedly written by Joseph Smith and translated from a golden plates that he, that he was given by an angel Moroni. Now see that, friend? Do they really believe the Bible? We believe the Bible. No, you don't believe the Bible. No, you don't believe the Bible. Here's what they're going to say. 
members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, believe the Bible indeed so literally. Now, you see the contradiction I have here? So literally and completely do their beliefs and practices conform to the teaching of the Bible that it is not uncommon to hear informed persons say. Now listen, they believe the Bible so much, they conform to it so much that it's not uncommon to hear informed people say, if all men believed the Bible, all would be Mormons. Bible doctrine is Mormon doctrine, and Mormon doctrine is Bible doctrine. They are one and the same. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to take your, your assessment of the Bible that your apostle uh, Orson Pratt said about the Bible, and I'm going to apply that to the Book of Mormon then, since they're one and the same. Right? Can't we do that? If they're one and the same, we'll say the same thing about the Book of Mormon as we say about, as y'all say about the Bible. Nobody in his right mind Nobody in his right mind would say the Book of Mormon is inspired. Now, isn't that what we can do? You see, they profess to follow the Bible. They profess to believe the Bible. Oh, yeah, if you follow the Bible, you'd be a Mormon. Funny, if I follow the Bible, in all of its corruption and mistranslation, I don't even find the, the word Mormon in the Bible. Isn't that funny? Isn't it strange that you could say the Bible is Mormon and the Mormon is the Bible, but not at one time? Do you read any, anything about the Book of Mormon in here? And if I followed this, I'd be a Mormon? But then if you ask them if I need the Bible, if I need the Book of Mormon? No, 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 no. See, friends, they don't really believe the Bible. They don't really believe the Bible. Here's one more quote from the, from the Latter-day Saints. In my judgment, there is no book on earth yet come to man as important as the book known as the Doctrines and Covenants. With all due respect to the Book of Mormon and the Bible and the Pearl of Great Price, which we say are our standards in doctrine. Now, that's what I showed you right here, friends. That's what I showed you right here. The Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and Pearls of Great Price. And this man... And this is Joseph Felding Smith. He was the 10th so-called prophet, seer, and revelator of the Latter-day Saints Church. He says of all these books, the Book of Mormon, the Pearl of Great Price, the Bible, and Doctrine and Covenants, the Doctrine and Covenants, the Book of Doctrine and Covenants, to us stands in a peculiar position above them all. This is, this is better than the Bible. Better than the Bible. Oh, but we believe the Bible and as much as translated correctly. But we put it down on the list. Friends, do they really believe the Bible? What you better believe is they don't. What you better believe is they don't. It's, it's strange. It's strange to say that, that they would say the Bible is Mormon and the Mormon and Mormon is Bible and then turn around and say, but the Doctrine and Covenants are above them all. <laughs> well, why don't you say the Doctrine and Covenants are, is Mormon? Well, because that will turn people off. Because people believe and they trust and they know that this is indeed the Word of God. So if I'm going to snooker you, if I'm going to, if I'm going to hoodwink you, I'm going, to, I'm going to pull a con over you, you know what? I've got to make you think that I believe the Bible. Now that's what the Mormons say, but you know what? The Muslims are no different. Now the Muslims, you know, that, well, we believe the truth of the Bible. Listen to this, friends. Here's where we are. This is, this is some quotes from the Quran about the Bible. Now, I want you to listen carefully because you heard my veteran say, I believe the, the truth of the Bible. He says, And we did certainly give Moses the Torah and followed up after him with messengers. That's chapter 2, verse 87. So, Muhammad is, is, is verifying that, that the Torah is from God. Now, listen to this. Then he says in uh, uh, chapter 4, verses 163, We have sent the inspiration as we sent to Noah and the messengers after him. We sent inspirations to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, to Jesus, Job, Jonah, Aaron, and Solomon, and to David we gave the Psalms. So you've got the Torah, that's the law of Moses, 
you got the, the Psalms, right? You've got Job and Jonah. There's some, there's some uh, Old Testament uh, figures right there that we have books named after in the Bible. So all those, those, are, those, are, all from, those are all from Allah, they say. They're all from God. They're A-OK. They're okay. Here's another one. It is he who sent down to thee, step by step, in truth, the book, confirming what went before it. He sent down the law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus before this as a guide to mankind, and he sent down the criterion that is of judgment between right and wrong. That's chapter 3 and verse 3 from the Quran. <clears throat> so look what we have here. We have the Quran advocating that the Torah, the law of Moses, the Psalms, and the gospel were all given by God. And, and Muhammad put his stamp of approval on it. Those are fine. Those are good. Why? Because he was like the, the Mormons. Like the Mormons would do. Later, the Mormons, the Mormons would come along and use the same tactic. Hey, you know what? If I'm going to get people to believe what I'm saying, I've got to tie it in with the Bible, see? I've got to tie it in with the Bible. Now, Oftentimes what you'll find, friends, when you say things like what Paul said, when you're talking to a Muslim, you know what? Paul, they don't really think Paul is, is inspired. They, they might go with the gospel, but see, the apostles, the other, the other letters that are in the, in, the, in the book, those are all, that's all the corruption. So that's all the stuff that's added to it. See? So, so, so we, we, they, they'll say, well, the gospels, but... They're not so big on the rest of the Bible. But here Muhammad is confirming the law of Moses, the Psalms, and the Gospels were all given by, by God. Now, hang with me. Listen. Listen carefully. Let's think about this. When, uh, when Muhammad wrote, think of the time frame. Why did Muhammad not talk about the rest of the Bible if it was so corrupt? Why didn't he come out and say, just believe the Gospels? Why didn't he just say, just believe the Gospel of Christ, but all these other letters, Paul and Peter and James and, Matt and, uh, James and, and Jude and, and John, why, why, don't believe them, just believe the Gospel of Christ. Why did he say that? Why didn't he, why didn't he just condemn Paul? Man, that'd take out half the New Testament right there. See, see, it was around back then. It was around back then. As a matter of fact, look what Muhammad will say. Chapter 6, verse 34, he said, Rejected were the messengers before thee, and patience and constancy, they bore their rejection and their wrongs until our aid did reach them. There is none that can alter the words and decrees of Allah. Then again it says, the word of thy Lord doth find its fulfillment in truth and in justice. None can change his words for he is the one who heareth and knoweth all. Chapter 6, verses 1 through 1, chapter 6, 115. Look, look at this. None can change his words. So Muhammad is talking about the book that we have here, the New Testament, and he says none can change the words of Allah. Allah sent, sent all these things down. No one can change it. So here's what we have. Now Muhammad lived about 600 years after the whole Bible, that's Old and New Testament, were completely revealed. All right? 570 born about 570 A.D., all right? So let's just say 600 A.D., <clears throat> he was talking about the gospel, the Torah, and the Psalms. So all the New Testament had been completely given for several hundred years. The, the New Testament as we have it today has, has been written. And yet he, he didn't say it was corrupted. He didn't say that uh, what had anything that had been written back then had been corrupted. So it could not have been corrupted at all, according to the Quran. Because remember, nobody can change the words of Allah. 
And the writings that we have, <clears throat> the writings that we have, you can find, you can find uh, copies and trans uh, copies of, of of the New Testament manuscripts easily back to the to the second century. So second, third, fourth, fifth century. This is this is what we have today. The Bible we have today is surely as old as as when Muhammad was living, yet he he didn't say it was corrupted. He put a stamp of approval on it. See, friends, it was only later that Muslims started realizing, hey, this book contradicts the Quran. So what we need to do is find a way to uh, marginalize the Bible. Oh, it's been corrupted. Now, wait a minute. The Quran says you can't alter God's word. So here's the question. Here's the question that Muslims and Mormons need to answer. When was the Bible corrupted? Where is it corrupted? And more importantly, if it's the inspired word of God, as you claim to believe, how was it changed? Now think about that. If you believe that the Bible is inspired word of God, how was it changed? How was it changed? And if you claim that your writings that you follow, whether it be the Book of Mormon or the Quran, if those indeed are inspired too, how do we know that they haven't been changed? How do we know they're not corrupted? Oh, I guess we're supposed to take your word for it, right? So we'll take your word that your book is fine, but this book is corrupted. No, you can't have it both ways. <clears throat> if you hold to the Bible, you've got to give up the Book of Mormon Doctrines and Covenants, Pearl of Great Price, and the Quran. See that? And if you hold, if Muslims, if y'all hold to the Quran, you know what? <laughs> the Quran actually says this book hasn't been corrupted, so you have to give up the Quran. See, Muslims, either way you go, if you say, if you say, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold to the Bible, you gotta give up the Quran. If you say I'm gonna hold to the Quran, you still gotta give up the Quran, because the Quran says this book is right. So can you tell me how, how was this book corrupted? Where was it corrupted if it can't change? See, here, here's what we're talking about, friends. Peter says in 1 Peter 1, verse 23, he says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God. The Bible actually says it's incorruptible. Now, you've got Muhammad saying it's incorruptible. You've got the Mormons saying, yes, that we believe it's inspired word of God. In as much as it's translated correctly. See, they're throwing that little caveat in there right there. But here's the Bible saying it is incorruptible. By the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is grass, and the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But... The word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word by the gospel is preached unto you. This is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. The unchanging, unalterable, incorruptible word of God. This is what we're talking about. Now, Jesus said in Luke 21, verse 33, Luke 21, verse 33. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. You know what, friends? When we're talking about the Book of Mormons, the Book of Mormon or the, the Book of the Muslims, the Quran, we kind of made a little game out of it <clears throat> just to get you to see how really similar there are, and there's a whole lot more similarities a whole lot more similarities, but I'm fixing to run out of time, so I want to wrap up. I want to have some time to close up. Here's what we're talking about, friends. In all seriousness, 
the reason all these religions are so much alike is because they all came from the same source. It's not the Bible. It's not God. It's all man. They all came from men. And all they've done is try to tag, try to tag along with the Bible to give some credibility. Now, friends, think about this. If someone, if someone stole your identity and started buying things under your name, you know what they've done? They've attached your name to their illegal activity. Would you like that? Would you like that? I wouldn't like it. Well, you know what? These religions, the Mormons, Muslims, what they've done is they've attached God's name to their false religion, and he's not liking it either. And as I said before, you know, these, these folks, well, they, they profess to believe the Bible. They really don't. But friends, aren't you really in the same boat? Aren't you really in the same boat? Because when you hear the Bible preached, and when you hear someone give you the Bible, then you turn around and say, well, but. I, listen, I, I always hear some good calls when I come in in Mark's uh, teaching. It just amazes me. You know, people say, well, you're smart. You know the Bible, but you just don't have enough love. Well, why don't you deal with the fact that we're telling you the Bible? All right? I'll work on my attitude, but how about this? How about you conform to the Word of God? See that? But see, people want to hold on to what they believe. Look, friends, the Bible says in order to be saved, what a person must do is believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. John 8, in verse 24, Jesus said, you shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I'm he, you shall die in your sins. You've got to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, the Muslims don't believe that. They don't believe he's the Son of God. So right there, they're lost. All right? You've got to, you've got to uh, repent of your sins, Luke 13 and verse 3. I tell you, nay, but except you repent, shall all likewise perish. Paul said in Acts 17 and verse 30, he said, at times of ignorance, God winked at, but now I commandeth all men everywhere to repent. You've got to repent. You've got to turn. You've got to confess Christ before man, Acts 8, in verse 36. The eunuchs wanted to, be, wanted to be baptized, and Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he said, I believe Jesus Christ, Son of God. You've got to confess that you believe Jesus Christ, Son of God. Do you believe Jesus Christ, Son of God? Yes, I do. Okay. Then he had to be baptized for the remission of sins, Acts 2 and verse 38. Peter said, repent, be baptized to everyone in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You know what people do? Oh, I don't want to do that. Well, aren't you doing just what the Mormons and the Muslims do? Picking and choosing the Bible? French can't do that. Can't do that. So what we're talking about is Muslims or Mormons, they all come from man, and that's the problem. What we're trying to get you to do is read the book, about, the book of, of God, the book from the Lord. Make sure that what you're asking and what you're getting is indeed a word from the Lord. Friends, without time, maybe we can do more. If you want like a copy of this book, it's free, Muslim Shovel. Just give me a call after we go off the air. Give me a call, 276-340-2653. That's my phone number. We'll get you one, get it out to you. Thanks for watching tonight. Remember, that's what does the Bible say, and you always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Uh, a Rockingham County woman sentenced in Superior Court yesterday in regards to a drunken driving accident that took the lives of two sisters, and that's coming up for you in just a few moments. We'll tell you what Rockingham County District Attorney Craig Blitzer had to say in just a minute. But we do want to remind you that a winter weather advisory remains in effect for the Star News region. That's until 10 o'clock tonight. And that's for Southside Virginia and for the Piedmont Triad area of North Carolina. According to the National Weather Service, this area could expect snow and sleet accumulations. Southside Virginia could possibly see two inches, while the Piedmont